Hey, it's day 124. We started the day at uh, Height of Lands parking area, and we're going to hike to South Arm Road about 14 miles. Cool day. It's in the high 50s. It's pretty chilly. Hopefully, I'll get warmer as we go. Um, this is the same trail that we had started two days ago and uh, ended up not doing because of the uh, swollen river, the Bemis River. If you want to see a good representation of how hard it can be to cross the Bemis River when it's swollen, look at uh, Taylor Nahamsha's uh, video of her hike last year in 2023, uh, video 120, 112, part two, about eight minutes in. That was the final straw for her, and she ended up quitting her through hike that year. So, we're going down to Bemis. Hopefully the uh, stream is not that swollen this morning. Um, it did rain some last night, but I don't think a lot. So we shall see. Um, yeah, so a little, uh, little anxious about it, a little concerned. <laughs> Mainly because it is cold, and I just don't want to get water that, you know, get that wet. But we'll see. And as an omen to the day, I didn't get more than 100 yards before I fell. <laughs> I just slipped in the mud and went down on my butt. All's good, but yeah. Slippery today. Everything's wet. So, going to be a little slow going. All right, we're headed south down to the River Bemis. We just met a northbound hiker, and he had just crossed it. And he says the water levels are low. Well, not real low, but he was able to get across with just one foot getting wet. That's pretty good. So, that's heartening. Yay. I didn't want to get my uh, lower body submerged in the ice water on a cold day like today. Yeah, and there's been a lot of these little streams before we even hit Bemis. Bemis River. It's very low. Imagine the, uh, it being up to, in some cases, waste. I think when uh, Taylor tried to cross, it was up past her shoulders. Piece of cake. All right, this one looks a little more challenging. Just gotta find a place to cross. Oh, that's the one hiker that said something about there's a down tree and get to the end of it and jump. Buzz packing his electronics up in Ziplocs in case he falls in the water and floats downstream. We'll recover his body, but his electronics will be fine. Remember the rule, don't buckle. I held on to that tree as long as I could. The minute I let go of it, it felt real sketch. I just tried to brace myself for the jump. Whoa! <laughs> we keep climbing up some pretty interesting climbs. We've been... Uh, Pretty much doing a lot of these, just climbing over boulders and mainly up. And here's a couple we've hit that are down. And uh, at least there's some footholds. That'll be good. I think this ground cover just looks so cool. Like sea foam. Well, all right. started out hiking today it was in the upper 50s now it's uh 62 63 so it's really getting to be a nice day
That's where we started this morning on that road. Right there. Well, uh, hiking around uh, Beavis Mountain South Peak has been uh, quite uh, good. Uh, one of the main positives is the real good uh, use of blazes and rocks, cairns and rock walls that kind of steer you, arrows to tell you which way to go. So it's all been pretty easy. So that's cool. I'd say the only negative is the sections that are like this that I've got to walk through. It's a bit wet. Well, I kept them dry for a while. If you look in the distance, you'll see that road and there's a like a bulging area in it where the parking area is. That's where we started today uh, about four hours ago. So we climbed over that first mountain, which is South Peak. And now we're climbing up the top of Bemis Peak. Got about another 600 feet up to go. Quite the uh, rainforest here. Reminds me of the Smokies. Everything's covered in moss. All right, we're nearing the summit of Bemis Mountain, 0.2 miles away. Little view. In the distance, you can see the windmills. Now I gotta climb down this. Yeah. What kind of bird are you? Kind of a turkey, huh? Hmm? All right, we have, uh, after reaching the summit of Bemis Mountain, we are now descending, and, uh, and then we'll be climbing up to Old Blue Mountain, which will be the last mountain of the day. Um, weather's well, been interesting. It's, uh, we've had scattered rain clouds. We've had some rain, pretty, pretty light rain. And, uh, yeah, and then sun. And then it's going back and forth between sun and no sun. So, I like the sun because it's a little cool still. A little bird. You know, I always appreciate a viewpoint that has a bench. So, yeah, cool. So we come to a blowdown, and we've we've had quite a few on this trail, but uh, this one is interesting. <laughs> well, it wasn't too bad, and there isn't any way around it. Sometimes you'll see a if a blowdown's been there a while. People make trails to go around it to not have to deal with it. But this one, there isn't any. It extends quite a bit. The funny thing is, we turn around to go farther down and, oh, more blowdowns. Yeah. All right, after having just cleared the other two blowdowns, we come to this one. I'm really not sure 
how we deal with this either. We'll have to figure it out. So many blowdowns. I'm not documenting them all, but there's a lot of them. And what I'm finding is, since I have a rain skirt on, since it started pouring, it now let up, that uh, it's real hard to go over these with a rain skirt. Uh, yeah. First world problems. But yeah, it totally opened up and I'm soaked. It took, you know, just a couple of minutes to get all my stuff on and yeah. Yeah. Wet. Wet. Well, I think we made it to the top of Old Blue Mountain. It's not been an easy climb. Wet, cold. Yeah, ready for this day to be done. A little tired too. Legs are sore. But uh, yeah, it's all downhill now. 2.8 miles and we're done. Can't wait. The whole way down has been pretty sketchy from the old big blue old blue mountain. But uh, at least here we put in some rebar and some handrails. All right. So nice of them to provide steps and a handrail. As the water rushes down the face of the rock. So you know you're out hiking late when you have to break out the headlamp to really see where you're going. I mean, it's not night yet, it's not dark, but it's pretty dark. So, yeah, this is helping. All right, so what we learned is that uh, night hiking is not the same as day hiking. I mean, everything looks different. So what just happened was I was on a steep descent coming down off some rocks under the dirt, and I slipped. I just misjudged or miscalculated, which I don't think is being helped by the night. Anyways, I um, I went off the edge of the dirt and slid down about five feet and kind of stopped but i felt like my legs were kind of hanging down like i know i'm on a steep descent i don't know what's below me and if i keep moving and there's really nothing to grab i, I was the moment of panic I, I grabbed the root and the root just started coming off and i grabbed the branch and the branch was just a broken branch lying on the ground and started moving I'm like dang so Anyways, I finally was like digging my feet and hands into the ground trying to not fall down farther. And uh, then got up to a, where the tree trunk was and grabbed the tree trunk and pulled myself back up. Anyways, it was a bit of a moment. I don't know if I like this night hiking stuff. I uh, don't know if I'd recommend it. Maybe for younger people who are better at this but it's just now I'm kind of freaked out a little I only got 0.3 miles left and this looks pretty easy here but yeah I thought the part I fell at was easy too but oh well